Is innovation important in video games? Should a developer find a formula that works and stick to it as long as people don't get angry and complain about it? Pokemon Legend Arceus? 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 I don't really know how to say this word. I'm not sure what the deal is. But anyways, it comes today as an answer from Game Freak. Game Freak is the main developer of the Pokemon series as a whole. They did the vast majority of the games. The only one they really didn't do was the remakes of Diamond and Pearl, which was done by a different company. Arceus has, which is what I'm going to call it, several major departures from previous game mechanics, others having slight modifications or changes to their idiosyncrasies and mechanics. Game Freak intends on trying their best in breathing innovation into an extremely old and kind of stagnant formula. Also, these old and extremely stagnant formulas are ones that so many people hold close and dear, and without a doubt, there's going to be people that are going to be disappointed by these changes overall. Starting out, Arceus only looks okay. In handheld mode, the Switch has an amazing screen, and this really helps cover up the horrendous texture resolution and overall low model detail. When you put it on your TV, it, it just looks bad. There's like no anti-aliasing whatsoever, and it just... Everything looks like you could count the squares. This fully demonstrates the difficulty, as well as Game Freak's inexperience in creating this style of game. This also demonstrates that the hardware in the Nintendo Switch is aging poorly. Frequently, the internal resolution will drop to close to 720p. It's 2022. And even sometimes, the frame rate will drop below 30 frames per second. Sometimes it's in the mid-20s. The draw distance in Arceus also has a very abrupt type of loading. The pop-in comes from time to time at a very short range. It makes it feel like a PlayStation 2 game. Regularly, Pokemon in the world models will load in at pretty short distances, and vistas that would normally look great, like look at Breath of the Wild, for example, look horrendous. There's just no detail because none of the trees are really rendered, for example. In Arceus, the water looks like it's straight from a PlayStation 1 game. Now, all of this is purely cosmetic. None of this heavily detracts from the gameplay, but the overall experience, it kind of does. And it really does demonstrate that Nintendo needs to get it together. They need a Switch 2 or a Pro release or something. Arceus fully displays the shortcomings of the Nintendo Switch. Just look at Arceus running on an emulator if you don't believe me. You can see the missed potential. They're running it at 4K, solid 30, only because the engine is locked at 30. The hardware is capable of faster. Now, one thing that makes up for the bad graphics is the sound. It is amazing. Frequently, you hear mixes of previous games in the new soundtrack, elements from the original Game Boy games, the Game Boy Advance games, the DS games, the 3DS games. On top of all of that, the soundtrack is perfectly arranged. It fits the theme extremely well, and honestly, I think Arceus has the best soundtrack out of all the Pokemon games. This is setting the bar extremely high. It's all just so nostalgic, but at the same time, new. Now onto gameplay. This is the biggest departure to any previously ingrained formula I've ever seen to date. It is for sure the biggest departure for the Pokemon series yet. For starters, the whole world is 3D and not top down. This may not be a huge difference to you if you've played any of the more recent previous Pokemon games. However, myself, and I feel like this is kind of a recurring theme, a lot of us strayed away. The last one I played besides the Diamond and Pearl remakes was Gold and Silver. There's a bunch of people who the last games they played were on the DS. Maybe they never experienced the 3D. This was very different to me. Wandering around the world can soak up hours of your time. As you wander around, you can even find and interact with wild Pokemon. Imagine that. This adds a lot of continuity that's always been kind of missing from the Pokemon games in general. They can only exist in tall grass? Not anymore. You can just see them kind of wandering around, living their lives. A lot of them will even act differently to you based off of their temperament. Like Bidoof, he just kind of wants to hang out with you. 
Starly, Scaredy Cat, runs away. And the other stronger and higher level Pokemon, they'll fight you. And if you get hit too many times with their attacks, you can even die. The tall grass is still a thing, however. Now, it's used to conceal your presence instead of the Pokemon's. If a Pokemon doesn't know you're there, you can throw a Pokeball at them. And if it hits them, you have a decent chance of catching them. <laughs> if you hit them in the back, it has an even higher chance of catching them. So there's like a stealth element, but you're the one hidden, not them. Pokemon Battles saw the biggest changes of the entire series in Arceus. Gone are the days of the black loading screens and the animation of, oh my god, you found this Pokemon. Even though you've seen that same animation like 20 times, they still make you watch it. Instead of throwing a Pokeball at the wild Pokemon, now you throw a ball with your Pokemon in it. This causes your Pokemon to almost instantly pop out and start a fight. It is almost entirely seamless, and when you compare it to the previous titles, this is going to save players a ton of time on just loading. I saw an article that claimed the average players spent about 15% of their entire playtime watching a loading screen or these battle start animations. These changes to starting battles are pretty much the biggest change and the best change ever introduced into the series. If you want to grind wild Pokemon for just XP, this is way faster. And it's way smoother, and it just feels so much better than the old method of running back and forth in the grass. Trainer battles are pretty similar to the previous entries in the series, however they seem to be pretty few and far between in Arceus. This is actually kind of makes sense when you think about it from the lore, because you're a researcher who's assigned to research the Pokémon in the region to determine if humans can live alongside them, whereas in the later games everybody's just trying to be Ash Ketchum. Instead of getting money from beating other trainers, it's awarded by completing research. You're awarded for each thing you do, like catching a Pokemon, and some Pokemon will give you extra, as well as catching Pokemon you have not previously caught. Researching also provides you with stars at predetermined intervals, each one giving you ability to command higher level Pokemon similar to how the badges worked in the previous titles, as well as unlocking higher recipes for crafting. More on that later. Part of doing research in Arceus is completing the Pokedex. It's actually far more involved in this game. Not only do you have to capture them all, but you gotta research them all as well. Several actions you perform with a Pokemon, or observe being performed, will provide research points. Some give more than others, and as long as the total amount equals to 10 or more, you complete the Pokedex entry for that one. Some Pokemon also have side quests you can do that provide some research as well, while others are really difficult to complete and you end up just catching a ton of them instead. Sometimes in the world, time distortions will happen. This is like a big rift that opens and a big dollar and purple bubble pops around them. Inside these regions that are time distortions, it'll spawn different wild Pokemon. Some are unique to the region, location, and the distortion. At the same time, if you catch Pokemon in this distortion, you get way more experience and a lot of the times you'll get different types of Pokemon as well, so you get to like kind of double dip there. One major problem with these is sometimes in these, and also some trainer battles very rarely, you're faced by extremely unfair odds. Sometimes you'll be doing 2 or even 3v1. In Pearl and Diamond, you would always have equal numbers on the field. It would just select whoever's next in line. In Arceus, it's just a 3v1. This it's a feature that really should have been in the game, and it's not really fair. I don't understand why they pulled it. Now comes a change that I feel is going to be hotly debated. Noble Pokemon and Gym Trainers. Instead of fighting a Gym Trainer in each city, progressing through the world in each region, there is a Noble Pokemon that is considered a Guardian for their respective regions. Come on, college boy! Because of a story element, these Nobles are frenzied and will attack anyone on sight. It's your job to calm them down. Is Arceus even a Pokemon game without gym battles, though? This is a core feature of Pokemon games, and it's gone. Sure, it makes sense with the lore aspect, seeing as, again, there really isn't that many trainers in the world, in general. Each one of these nobles has wardens and their, their trainers, and I guess beating them sword is like a badge, but not really. They force you to battle them in order to gain their trust, but once you beat them, they're your boy. And you beat them, and they let you take on their noble. These noble Pokemon fights are completely different. The way it works is you play as your trainer character and you use these like bombs 
to calm these Pokemon down from their frenzied state. These bombs consist of things that they like or things from the region that they are intended to be the guardian of. Basically you have to dodge their attacks with your trainer. The trainer gets a leap that is 100% damage immunity during so, so it makes this a little bit easier. And throw these bombs at the Pokemon until either they're in a stunned state or low enough health to engage in a real battle with your Pokemon. These are tough fights, but a decent trainer can handle it. And personally, I wish this is how they would have just done the whole fight. I'm really not a fan of the phase with the bombs on the nobles. And it's a Pokemon game. Just let me use my Pokemon. As you explore the world, you come across things other than just Pokemon and, like, trees. Naturally occurring resources that you can gather. Plants, ores, stones, all sorts of stuff. Each one of these resources can be gathered by your Pokemon, too. They even get a little bit of experience for doing it, so it works as a great experience catch-up. You just basically do it with whoever's your lowest level. Basically, every item in the game is craftable with these resources. Farming the base materials to make things is pretty easy, and for some stuff, it just really doesn't make sense to farm, though. Buying full heals is almost always a better spend of time than farming the materials to make them, seeing as the materials are pretty rare. Either way, if you end up with zero money, your save isn't just straight up bricked. And by buying the items, it can save you some time and it's a great option to have, but crafting them is too. Since the world is so large while you're doing this, you get a few options of fast travel. You can fast travel to any of the previously cataloged camps that pop up. They also provide you with travel Pokemon like Wordier, who you can ride, who's really fast on land, or a fish that I can't remember the name of, that you ride on water. These seamlessly switch between each other, meaning you can smoothly traverse the world pretty quickly. As you're exploring the world, you'll come across a lot of Pokemon. Every now and then you'll come across an Alpha Pokemon. These are, when they're uncaptured, have red glowing eyes, and even when captured as well, are much larger than the normal ones. They are much more difficult to capture and resist capture far more than the regular ones do, and once they're captured, they have better stats than the regular ones do as well. Sometimes they'll be a bit underleveled compared to the rest of your party, seeing as they're an alpha, so they're a little harder, so it makes sense to fight them when they're you're a little bit higher level than them. This doesn't sound great having to like play catch up with them, but then you realize XP share is still in the game. The entire party gets XP based off of the total amount, and just as before, the whoever you're fighting with gets a little bit more, and now since there's fewer trainers, you get XP mainly from battling wild Pokemon and catching them as well. It sounds like the world's pretty full of things to do, but when you start to pick at the top layer, the number of options really starts to show how short the list actually is. Not really that many things to do besides the main story and a handful of side quests that all really have similar objectives. The main attraction is to catch and observe and finish your Pokédex. I suppose this fits the lore pretty well, but I would have loved to have more optional stuff. More cool caves that just weren't dead ends with habitats to explore, to observe, puzzle rooms to just do puzzles in, like the older games had, and the like. Game Freak was really testing the waters here though, so maybe they just simply didn't have the time or the commitment to do it. Maybe they were just afraid to really go all out on a game that they were taking a lot of risk on. Hopefully the next game, seeing as now they have a pretty strong response from this one, will encourage them to be a little bit more risk-taking. One major change is to how skills work as well as assigning them. Gone are the days of TMs, for the most part, and having to pick right then and there whether you wanted to change skills. Changing skills now is by simply pausing the game, selecting the Pokémon, and changing their skills. Once your Pokémon has the requirements to learn a skill, you can assign and remove any skills at any time with zero cost. This is a great change since sometimes you would catch a wild Pokémon and they would have terrible default movesets. You can even move the order of which the list is populated for you if you really wanted to. Also included in the new skill system is the addition of Agile and Strong Style attacks. Basically, after a Pokémon is high enough level over when they learn the skill, they unlock different styles of that skill. 
Agile increases the speed of the Pokemon, and attacks maybe even be able to be done twice in exchange for some damage, while Strong does the opposite, trading speed for damage. Fortunately, Arceus now has actual UI at the top right that's toggleable, showing whose turn it is, how many turns will be taken, and even how these different skill types will affect this. I've wanted this feature in the base game for years, even before they added Strong and Agile types. There was times that it felt like the AI was going two or three times, and I had no idea why. Like, oh, I'm using a relatively fast Pokemon, but he gets to go twice? Why? Explain. Well, now it tells you. The story's kind of weak, but it's also pretty grounded for the most part. Basically, you fell out of a rift in the sky that also, the same rift causes the time distortions, and is the root cause of these Pokemon being frenzied. That part isn't super grounded, but everything else kind of is. People being worried about their noble Pokemon being frenzied is grounded, the research team that you're assigned to, you're assigned to explore the region and research the Pokemon that live there. You're trying to determine whether it's indeed safe to live alongside them, while also researching and cataloging many things about the different types and species of Pokemon that exist in the world. When you fell out of this rift, Arceus, <laughs> for some reason, he gives you a phone? This explains why you have a pocket map back in the 200 years ago that you just fell into? Several characters in Arceus are clear ancestors to the previous ones of Diamond and Pearl, seeing as both games take place in the same region and actually have extremely similar layouts overall, this does not come as a surprise. Game Freak was really taking a risk on this one. They saw that the walls were slowly closing in on them. Innovation, and more specifically the distinct lack of innovation in the Pokemon series, was starting to slowly cause the series to become stale, and with time, would have caused them to slowly fade, maybe even fade away. This may have taken decades, but they saw the writing on the wall. They made big changes to the series, and in almost every major change they made, it was for the better. Sure, Arceus has a very limited multiplayer with no trainer battles at all, and an item that's used to evolve instead of trading, but you could still trade Pokemon in Arceus, but there's no exclusives in this time per version, seeing as there's only one game. I do have to admit, I adore this game. It's been a very long time since I played a new Pokemon game. My last was X and Y, and in total I think I played those three hours I disliked them so much. Arceus made so many right decisions, with putting the player directly into the gameplay, as much of a seamless experience as possible, and I'm sure everyone can agree that the original formula was becoming quite stale at this point. I really do hope the next Arceus-style game will be released on a faster Nintendo Switch, and that Game Freak also just learns a little bit and does a better job of optimizing. The Switch itself, without a doubt, holds Arceus back, but Game Freak did manage to create something special here, and personally, I feel like Arceus will be remembered as the game that broke the cycle. The Pokemon game that took huge risks, but ultimately was rewarded with most of these, and in the end, will be well received. As always, thank you for watching the video. Leave a like if you liked the video, or a comment if you have feedback, questions, concerns, or suggestions about what to play next.